Welcome back to another video. Today I will show you how I work with Yarn in Loveless using Visual Studio Code and combining Yarn and the GUI editor in Home Assistant. This video is for those of you who is using the Home Assistant OS, but you are also able to do the same kind of thing if you are running Home Assistant container based in Docker or similar environment. We will talk about how you should consider making this move yourself how we are setting up the Visual Studio Code in Home Assistant and the benefits from it, how we can combine Yarn and GUI mode in Loveless, how you're able to pin Visual Studio Code in the sidebar and also uploading files through Visual Studio Code, and how you can do this if you're running a standalone Home Assistant container. I personally use Visual Studio Code because it comes with a lot of options built in and we have a marketplace with extensions for all kinds of things. When we are working with Yarn in Visual Studio Code, the software is able to show errors on the way if we have a typo or if we are not following the Yarn standards. That's very useful when we are making the Yarn document ready for Home Assistant. We also have auto-completion of material design icons, so that's easier to navigate around in. And we have things like auto-completions of entity names pulled directly out of Home Assistant. Visual Studio Code also also saving our files, so we doesn't have to remember that. And you also have an option to upload files directly by just dragging and dropping them into the Explorer. That's very useful, so it doesn't have to leave the code editor. I will try to use Visual Studio Code in the next upcoming videos, instead of using the raw editor in Home Assistant. And that brings us to how you can install Visual Studio Code in your Home Assistant OS. We will install the Home Assistant add-on Studio Code server, which are done in the add-on section of the Home Assistant OS by just searching for it. After you have installed it, remember to restart your Home Assistant engine just to make sure that everything is up to date. The benefits of having the Studio Code Server installed instead of trying to do things by yourself is that it comes with a great amount of extensions for Visual Studio Code. You have auto syntax corrections and Visual Studio Code knows about how the service data is structured you have the auto-completion, as mentioned before, and things like that. In other words, it's just easier and you don't have to go through the struggle by yourself. Normally dashboards are running in the GUI mode instead of YARN mode, where we're able to edit things. But if you will take advantage of Visual Studio Code, we should create a dashboard which are running in YARN mode. That's done by opening up the configuration.yarn and adding the Loveless key. You can see the Visual Studio Code all already helping us by telling what the Loveless key means. You should define the storage mode as well and adding a new dashboard. I call mine floor plan community. In here we are defining the YARN mode and we are pointing to the right file path for the file itself. Give it a title and an icon as well, if you prefer that. And hereafter, I will simply recommend you to restart Home Assistant. If you're still missing the Visual Studio Code shortcut in the left sidebar, you can go to Settings, Add-ons, selecting the add-on itself, and just toggle the Show in sidebar. Hereafter, you have a nice shortcut in the left sidebar. File uploading can be done by just finding the files you need to upload and dragging them into the window. Pay attention on where you're dropping them to secure it's uploaded to the right path. That's done as simple as this. We're able to open multiple files at once. By using the control button and double clicking, you're forcing the software to opening up a new tab, but splitting up the window. By using shift instead, you will see it's opening up in a new tab. And while we add it, maybe even pay attention to how I'm separating 
my YAMP files by splitting them up with the include option. That way I'm able to keep the structure as much organized as possible. Here you're able to see that my case one, I just include, and I have that right here in a new file where I'm calling the floor plan card in a vertical stack. I will recommend you to go down the same path because it's very useful when you're trying to spot the one typo in a more than thousand lines of code document. Talking about error corrections in Home Assistant, you should always pay attention to your right scroll bar, where you also have a very good visual indicating that you have an error in your code. You can see it's lightning up red right here, right here, but also right here. If you're running Home Assistant in a container, for example, in a Docker environment, you're able to use whatever container you would like where Visual Studio Code is baked into. I personally use this for my setup outside of my sandbox environment, but you can also find other containers optimized for the Home Assistant. It's up to you. I will tackle this, but it's always useful to jump onto a container where all Home Assistant related things are optimized. The one thing you should know is that the Visual Studio Code will not live inside Home Assistant itself, rather you will have it on another web page. But you're always able to create an iframe and just use that as a shortcut in the sidebar. Lastly, remember that we have a great community at GitHub if you have any HA floor plan related questions. Take a look at our documentation if you'd like to see cool things running in your browser and checking that yarn code as well. And if you enjoy my work, please consider buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash coffee to And that brings us to the end of this video. Please like the video if you enjoyed the content and use the comment section below if you have any questions related to the video. Thank you for watching.